I come to announce to you there is about to be a resurrection for somebody. When you don't exercise your faith, it will not be strong. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We must continue to be hearing the word of God. This is Get Connected with Bishop Israel Ade Ajala. Hello, and thank you for joining us for this life-changing edition of Get Connected with Bishop Israel Ade Ajala, God's prophet to the nations for such a time as this, and the creator of the Kindness Revolution. Today's topic is Breakfast with Jesus. Here is Bishop Israel Ade Ajala. I'm always amazed at the team that Jesus puts together. Mm -hmm. It tells me that the wisdom of man is different from the wisdom of God totally. I always look at it this way. If I were Jesus, will I ever call Peter? <laughs> will I ever call Thomas? Remember that Jesus was all-knowing. He yes. knows a lot. Will I ever call Nathaniel? You know, Simon Peter, the one who deny him, who always talk and then reason out it later. Or Thomas, who doubt whether he is a man or a woman. <laughs> He's a doubter. <laughs> or Nathaniel, who is a skeptic. <laughs> or will I call the, son the sons of Zebedee, that is James and John, whose mother was so greedy, he want to want to sit on the right hand of Jesus and another on the left. <laughs> I don't think so. But when you look at the people that Jesus called, you look at them, or will I call Matthew, the guy who was a tax collector and he inflate taxes. I just look at it. But he called them anyway. Yes. And somebody said, I don't know why Jesus called them. I said, the same reason he called me. <laughs> you know, Jesus never called you because you qualify. But as soon as you respond to his call, he qualifies you. What, what a powerful Jesus we have. Yeah. John chapter 21 is so vivid of the type of character of people of which I and you are susceptible to if we are not careful. Peter, James, John, Thomas, Nathaniel, and two others, the Bible says in John chapter 21. After Jesus already resurrected, he showed himself to them. Then Peter, the lead, the lead of the team says, I'm going fishing. I'm going fishing. And the rest say, we're going with you. And they, they jump into the boat. On the same sea that Jesus called them out of. Mm -hmm. Same sea of Galilee. They went back to the same sea. They found the old boat that they were using then. Mm -hmm. For almost three years, they left the boat. They were following Jesus but they are back in that same boat now. I'm coming back to that. Wow. And they went back to their old profession. I was telling a sister recently, I said, if you hang around your old people that you used to hang out before yes. you knew Christ, it takes them less than 21 days to make you go back to club and all the things you are doing again. It does not take that long for you to change. You've got to put your foot down. Peter said, I'm going fishing. From the same boat, from the same water that Jesus says, leave your boat and make you fishers of men. They, they went back. And God is always ready to play hardball with us. Yes. <laughs> when they got to the boat, they, they launched out all night. They caught nothing. And all of a sudden, 
The Bible says, when the morning came, Jesus stood on the shore. And the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus asked them, children, have you any food? Since you are fishermen, you've been... And they said to him, no, sir. Remember when he was going to call them out of that same profession, they, call, they toiled all night and caught nothing. And they went back again. <laughs> now, let me tell you the interesting thing is this. In John chapter 20, the Bible says Jesus breathed on them. He said, receive the Holy Spirit. So these guys have already received the deposit of the Holy Spirit in them. So they are not just Johnny just come lately Christian, if you will. And yet they went back to the old life. Mm. Listen to this. Jesus asked them, have you eaten yet? No, sir. Did you cut anything? No, sir. Then he told them, cast your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. And so they cast. Now they were not able to draw it in because of the multitude of fish. John realized it was Jesus. He said, it is the Lord. It is the Lord. Then Peter jumped into the, into the, into the, ocean, into the sea because they were not far from land. She, he ran to grab him. But watch this. What they were looking for was already at Jesus' feet. Yes. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish which you have caught. But before they brought the fish, they noticed that Jesus was already cooking some fish. <laughs> there was already fish. That's, that's right. The Bible says in verse 9, as soon as they had come to the land, they saw a fire of coals there and fish <laughs> laid on it. So Jesus now said, okay, bring your own. <laughs> But this one is already cooked. And then he thought, he said to them, come and eat breakfast. Mm. What fish were they eating? Was it the one they caught? No. no. It was the one they did not catch. <laughs> it was the one the Lord brought to them. Yes. You see, <laughs> why is this important? The word of God will terminate your toiling. It was the word of God in the first instance when Jesus says, launch, your, launch out into the deep for a catch. And, when, and, G, and Peter said, that's the first call. Peter said, we've toiled all night and we caught nothing but at your word. That same word came back to them. But this time, the word spoke the word to them. The Bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The word was Jesus. So the word was waiting for them at the shore. The word spoke the word to them. The word prepared their breakfast. <laughs> it was not their toiling that provided their breakfast. It was the word that provided for them their breakfast. Stop toiling this year. Go back to the word. The word is what liberated you from the shackles of sin and death. Mm -hmm. The word will be the one that will prepare your breakfast. David said it this way. He prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemy. The word will get you where your own energy cannot take you. So he said, come and eat. They said, and yet, the Bible says, they, yet none of the disciples there asked, who are you? Because they knew it was deja vu. Yeah. He's <laughs> like, whoa. And the Bible says in verse 13, then Jesus came, took the bread, and gave it to them, and likewise the fish. Mm. So who set the table? Jesus. Who prepared the meal? Jesus. Who is Jesus? The Word. The Word will set your table. The Word will prepare your meal. The Word will bring your healing. The Word, you say, ah, this Word, the, everything is the Word, the Word. <laughs> Without the Word, your world is empty. 
Without the word of God, your world is empty. Whatever the word cannot do, nothing can do it. The spirit of the Lord can never do anything until the word is spoken. In Genesis chapter 1, the Bible says the earth was without form and void. And the spirit of the Lord was brooding over the deep. The spirit was there. He did nothing. Then the Bible says, and God said the word, let there be light. Immediately the spirit goes to work. The mm -hmm. spirit always act on the word. Because there are three things that bear witness in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Spirit. Yes. And they, are, they bear witness with one another. So if you want your toiling not to be prolonged anymore, if you want your lack not to be prolonged anymore, if you want your healing to be quick, if you want your joy unspeakable full of glory to be immediate, and to be progressive and progressing. You need the word of God. Jesus says, come and eat breakfast. Later on, he gave them bread and fish. In John chapter 6, verse 48, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Yes. If the word can feed you with physical food so that you will not faint, think about it when you learn how to eat yourself the spiritual food, that's when you are waiting on the Lord. Mm -hmm. It means those that wait upon the Lord shall mm -hmm. renew their strength. I am with you this year. I am with you this year, brothers and sisters. How are you with me this year, Bishop? By reminding you that you should not live your life this year without the word of God. I am with you in prayer. I am with you in encouragement. Don't be too busy to eat breakfast. And the, your breakfast is not cereal. It's not Wheaties. <laughs> it is the word of oh, God. God. I will be right back after this announcement. Amen and amen. Thank you, Bishop, for the revelation of the word. We'll be back with more on come and eat breakfast after these announcements. Kingdom Connection Christian Center's free food bank is open to all. Our food bank is open every Thursday from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. We are located at 1391 Oswego Street in Aurora, Colorado. For more information, call 720-859-1737. Join us for our 23rd church anniversary. There will be a special anointing service on Friday, January 27th at 7 p.m. Our guest speaker will be Apostle Stephen Andrews of St. John's Pentecostal House of Restoration Ministries, Antigua and Barbuda. Come and be blessed. Download the Ade Ajala Ministries app on the Google Play and Apple iOS stores. Watch us on YouTube at Ade Ajala Ministries. Please like and subscribe to our channel to receive notifications. Remember to follow us on Instagram at Bishop Ade Ajala and connect with us on Facebook at Bishop Ade Ajala and Kingdom Connection Christian Center. Welcome back to Get Connected with Bishop Israel Ade Ajala. The subject is Breakfast with Jesus. Bishop, that was such a dynamic teaching in the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And I love how you started with, would those be the people that you would have selected mm -mm. to surround you that mm -hmm. you would have called? Mm -hmm. And for most of us, the answer is no. no. But Jesus did. Mm -hmm. And I love that passage where he is preparing the fish, preparing the breakfast for them. Bishop, in life, it says that uh, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. It's mm. like gas in your mm -hmm. tank. Mm -hmm. 
Bishop, oftentimes as believers, we go without breakfast mm -hmm. because we're spending our time toiling, trying to figure out how we're going to provide for ourselves, how we're going to make life work, how things are going to come together. Mm. But I love how you share, Bishop, in this teaching that Jesus already has what you need mm -hmm. if you would just rely on him. And yes. I feel like that's a rhema word yes. for someone in our audience today, Bishop, mm -hmm. who may be kind of down and out and not able to see where even their next meal is going to mm -hmm. come from. Mm -hmm. How would you encourage them today? Well, um, Jesus himself said in Matthew 6, 11, that this is the way you should pray. Give us this day our daily bread. God has a daily bread for everyone, whether physical or spiritual. The problem is we don't go to the source we look up to people. Let me tell you a story. When we were young, I was born in Africa. I was born in Nigeria. I was raised there. And my, my family at one point was so broke, we had nothing to eat. Nothing, absolutely. And my mother asked all of us. We were, she had seven kids. We are, at that time, we were only five. And she said, I, I, I'm talking something around 1965, 1966. And, that, and my mother said, children, kneel down. Speak to God, the provider, that he should provide for me. I don't have anything to give you. And we all knelt down in our living room. And I was about five years old, and I said, Lord, provide money for my mommy so she can give me food. And, and people laugh. But as soon as we finish that prayer, this is not a story they read. I'm talking about my life story. I came out to come and play in the yard, and somebody who was a friend of my father saw me. And he said, are you the son of so-so-so? And I was like, yes. And he gave me money. Another person came, gave me money. We had more than my mother's salary in that, that very day. Now, you can say all manner of things you want that God does not answer prayer. You are the liar as far as I'm concerned that's because right. I, that's my experience. That's right. Are you hearing me? Yes. He stayed with me till tomorrow that when you go to the right source, God has enough to bless you with. Yes. A joke or a story was, which is kind of, I don't know whether it is true or not, but it was interesting. You know, apartment that they always have a common hallway. Yes. A woman has four children, and she was a believer. She was a believer. And there's another single woman that does not believe in God in another apartment, and their door was across from each other. And the believing woman will cry to God, Lord, I don't have food for my children, and somebody will come and bless them, and they will eat. But one day, the atheist woman was listening to the prayer, and she, the woman that believed in God raised up her voice again. Lord, I don't have any food to give these children. You've done it before. Please, Lord, help me find a way to provide for me. The atheist woman had and went and cooked rice and beans and chicken and everything and put it in a nice plate in a bassinet and brought it to the door of the woman who has just finished praying with chicken with everything and went back to her door to wait woman finished praying opened the door she saw rice chicken beans and she took it and began to thank God. Lord, thank you for providing. Thank you for providing. To which the atheist woman said, your God didn't provide. I paid for it. I paid for it. The woman lift up her voice and said, Lord, thank you. You even made the devil to pay for it. <laughs> so, so it does not. God answer prayer. prayer yes. <laughs> you even made the devil to pay for it. I mean, who could have done that if not God? Listen, <laughs> God will answer you 
at your point of need, but you must go to him. He says, you must go. Because he who will believe God, must, he must first of all be, I mean, he said, without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he who will believe, uh, please him must believe that he is. And if you believe he is, then you must believe that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. If you go to him, he will provide. He may not provide according to your clock, but he will provide according to his time. For in his time, he makes all things beautiful. You see, that is why when people are saying, I, I, don't, I don't have this, I don't have that. Look, the disciples were there. They were discouraged. Because when they were following Jesus, they thought they were following the Messiah that is coming to liberate them from Roman power. They were following him because they thought he was the one that is going to establish his kingdom. And all of a sudden, I mean, these guys saw him raise the dead. If they did not see anything, they saw Lazarus four days in the grave. Later on eating, you know, mashed potato and gravy with them. Yeah. <laughs> they saw that. All of a sudden, now they arrested the same Jesus with that power. In fact, Peter was so, was so convinced that Jesus was powerful. That regardless of the number of the Romans army, Peter took out his knife and cut somebody's ear. Mm -hmm. he, and yet, Jesus died and he was put in the grave and then resurrected. They were devastated. There are times in our journey with God that we will feel so low, so down. That's not the time we should go back to whole life. That's what the disciples did. They went right back to the things they said goodbye to in the past. You don't go back. I said to people around me, not only did God call me out of that boat, I destroyed the boat. <laughs> I burnt the boat down. Even if I want to go back, there is no boat to use. <laughs> I, the, you need to destroy that boat. Don't be like a man who said, I want to stop drinking, but I just kept those, these two bottles of liquor just to keep reminding me that it's not good to be drinking. One day, those bottles will find, the, the content will find its way to your stomach. The only way you will not go back there is don't hide it in your house. You see, what you don't want in your life, don't allow it in your proximity. If they had destroyed the boat, I don't think they would have gone there. You know what Jesus said to them when he got there, when they finished eating? He knew who started all this. He didn't say John. He didn't say, he didn't say Nathaniel. He called Simon Peter. He said, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than this? Do you love me more than this? Peter said, yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus says, then feed my lambs. Feed my lambs. In other words, the lambs are the young ones. Feed my lambs. And then he called him again. Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter said, yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus says, tend my sheep. That word tend is the Greek word poimino. It's poimino. Poimino, and it means to, to, to keep, to protect. To keep, to protect. The first one is to feed. The second one is to protect. But feed the lambs. Protect the sheep. Don't leave them alone. Don't leave them without a leader. And then, at the third point, he now said, Peter, do you love me? Not do you love me more than this. Do you love me? Peter said, Lord, and now he was crying. You know <laughs> I love you. Jesus says, feed my sheep. Feed my lamb, tend my sheep, feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. After you have feed the lamb, the lamb will grow to become sheep. You must protect them yes. and you must feed them and keep feeding them. What does that mean to us today? 
Once you have put your hands to the plow and you say, I'm following God, then don't look back. Keep your eyes on him. If you are tired, remember the reason you are tired is because you have not eaten. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. I am the bread. The enemy will come. Listen, simply because you are speaking in tongues does not mean the enemy will not come to you. In fact, the Bible says Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit. And after he was yes. filled with the Holy Spirit, he was led by the Spirit mm -hmm. into the wilderness. How can the Spirit lead me? If I, I mean, I, I, I will expect the, the Spirit to lead me to the White House. He to lead me to Governor's Mansion. But the Spirit led him to the wilderness. And he was tempted in the wilderness. But hear this. When he was coming back, the Bible says he returned in the power of the Holy Ghost. He returned in the power of the Holy Spirit. The same Spirit that led him into the wilderness was with him to overcome the enemy and brought him out and empowered him. But what did Jesus use while he was in the wilderness? The word of God. Because the Bible says Satan came to him. He said, turn the stone to bread. Jesus said, it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone. No, you don't need to cry. You just need the word. And your world will be full of joy and rejoicing. Let me pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare your peace, your joy, your healing over your people today that are listening, watching me, and I decree and declare that the word of God will fill our heart, our mind, our soul, our spirit, that this year we will lack nothing. And things that are not working, by the power and the revelation of your word, you will lead us out of it, and there shall be testimony. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Thank you for joining us. This has been a presentation of the radio ministry of Bishop Israel Ade Ajala. For more information, contact Bishop Israel Ade Ajala by email at info at kcconline.org or by phone at 720-859-1737.